Welcome back to Crypto's Juiciest News, Baby Dolls. We have a Bitcoin price at $64,000. It looks like April is definitely our slowdown month. Despite everybody believing that it was going to be some hyperparabolic move, this is the Bitcoin weekly chart. And so far, we are just watching it rinse sideways. Now, I want to remind you of something. I was expecting, friends, that this cycle the is going to happen like the past. Me, and what I, I mean by that is, well, I made videos last year teaching you how there are certain patterns and behaviors Bitcoin does in its bear market, and it just keeps doing a fractal of itself until the very, very end. And what we've seen now, what it did is in our, in our 2023 recovery, for example, is whenever Bitcoin goes up, it doesn't do this like crack back down. It doesn't have hyper volatility anymore. What it does is it does these like little rinse out candles. You see this? It's become harder and harder basically to trade if you are used to the hyper volatility. So this is a sign of a dwindling volatility, higher maturity level, and it's becoming more old. That's pretty much, that's what you want. That's what Bitcoin's trying to become, right? It's trying to become money over time. Right now it's still tech, but it's becoming more like that. So as you can see, it goes red, green, red, green. So it's harder and harder to predict. So it basically just does this. See these little candle pass right now? Well, guess what we're seeing right now? We also saw it here around the Bitcoin ETF, and now we're seeing it again, you see that? So if you just see these, this is what it looks like, right? The volatility isn't too great. I mean, if you go back, friends, just to show you the early days of Bitcoin, I mean, you, <laughs> look what you're seeing at 2019. You're seeing these gigantic, poof, poof, like the huge moves, right? Also in the past as well, you were seeing these big moves, these huge spike ups and stuff here. And so uh, this is crazy, crazy moves. Okay, see this? This is like, this is what it used to do. Bang. But it doesn't have such giant, giant, fantastical moves anymore because it's just older. Okay, okay so that's pretty much signal, and what we're waiting to see. And this is the four hour chart. Now, with the four hour chart, I'm going to keep playing around with it, but I'm just going to show you that, friends. These types of moves, anything can happen at any point, man. All I'm doing is I'm just trying to find people. Oh, yeah, they kind of got a good read on it now. It's good. But I want you to know you have to specialize. If you want to make it in crypto, we'll play some nice angel music for these people who know they have to specialize. Now, specializing, friends, means you can't be really good at short term, really good at medium term, really good at long term. You can't do that. You can't be like an ultimate 100x gem finder and swing trade long term and do yield farming and manage all these. You can't. You end up basically you're trying to trace too many rabbits at once. So when I find people who are short term oriented and can do this stuff, it's basically just because I'm curious. That's it. It's pretty much I'm curious. But at the end of the day, you're still long and strong, even though you have a thousand reasons why you might not like get the prices that you want in the next 60 or 90 days. Okay. So it's really important to know that. And just to re repeat for, I know many people don't, don't know about markets and, and charts and just how everything moves and how it's a random chaotic walk over the, over the short term most of the time. You just got to know that the long-term trend is easy to write. It's easy to write. Just stay long and do nothing, okay? Changing the short-term directions, nearly impossible. That's why it's a game of winners and losers. Like the top 10% win, the bottom 90% lose pretty much. They get crushed, oh, oh, continuously trying to play the short term. So to get to the long-term there are a number of up moves that happen that benefit you if you just hold, but you just don't know when they come. You don't know when they come, the timing. You just know they eventually come. If you're constantly trying to do the short-term moves, you're trying to predict this type of stuff, and that's why most people get destroyed and wrecked. And it, I know logically, friends, you think, okay, if you build a house, you build one brick at a time. So what people think is they go, okay, if you build a house one brick at a time, maybe you build your portfolio one short move at a time. Okay, but that doesn't actually work on average because why? The game of investing in the short term, okay, short term, it's trading. There are not enough value creators to basically reprice stuff for everybody to win. It's people playing with each other back and forth, back and forth, okay? So it's pretty much what I, it's like, the, what I, it's the equivalent of this, friends. You and I are in a boxing ring and someone throws a $100 cash onto the boxing ring and then we have to, we have to fight each other and winner gets to take the $100 cash. Okay, now, do you see how they've thrown cash out and they've got $100? Now, here's the thing. There's a way for both of us to kind of walk away if they threw another $100, but you don't know if they're ever going to. You don't know when they will. They might, they might we might be fighting in the third round and then they throw the next $100 in. Okay, well, guess what? You take your 100, I take my 100, we walk away. Okay, or I could be greedy. I could try to take your 100 as well, okay? What would happen if big whales threw a thousand dollars cash on the floor now it's just like running for that see that that's why that cash being thrown in that's whales repricing stuff higher and not selling 
That's how they inject money into the system for long term. However, if they just throw those pennies, then it's us just playing with each other, fighting against each other. Okay, that's pretty much, that's why in the short term, the shorter the term, friends, the more PVP action there is. This is the Ethereum price chart. It's pretty much just the Bitcoin price chart with just a bit of different quirks and stuff here. But of course, you know, all of it's going to come down to, friends, the Bitcoin dominance. So everyone's going to be watching and waiting. Now, luckily for us, I've told you, right, the real Bitcoin dominance chart is the altcoin dominance. It's the one removing the top 10 coins, okay? But everyone likes looking at this because the Bitcoin dominance is just inverse ETH, ETH BTC. So if this goes down, friends, we need this to go below 51%. If it can come back down, it'll flip red, and then you have the little sell thing up here. And when it's when it's here, now it's pretty much go time. It's pretty much showing us, okay, the world wants to take on more risk. We've had now the Bitcoin halvening, and that pretty much everyone is ready for risk seeking behavior on average. Okay, but you know, I mean, we don't really know. We're just playing cycles, and we're hoping this stuff happens. The real chart is the altcoin dominance. We've gone through this many times before, and remember, it started a year ago. Friends, started in like June, not a year ago. Pretty much, you know, eight nine months ago, started moving up from here, but we don't feel it, right? Because it was a slow process. There were a couple of like, you know, there's a Telegram trading bot narrative. There was the roll bit one. It comes and goes. Then you had Soylana, AI, Coinbase. It's not market-wide. Market-wide might be an eruption like this, if you go something like that, because that's what happened last time, right? These eruptions like this. But here, here's the thing, man. See, this is something really important to look at. Even though the altcoin dominance did this move, 2021, Many people didn't sell. Why? Because their altcoins underperformed. Many people stuck in the high market cap stuff were getting crushed. That's why they never sold. It was only like Doge and Cardanzo and pretty much everything else just got blown to pieces from that existing list. Now, that's why you got to think from our existing lists today, we're looking at a lot of future dead bodies, friends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the CoinGecko ranking chart. There are a lot of dead bodies here that aren't going to move. I mean, friends, how do you even know Soylana is going to continue its run? That's what I've been telling you, like, hmm. I'm not, I'm not necessarily sold on Soylana because we've shown you many times where something can go early and the crowd thinks it's the bear market darling and then, or the bull market darling, and then it doesn't go anymore. It just has a first run. Okay. That's why it's really important on the time you chart against BTC and ETH. When the market is giving you a healthy BTC and ETH ratio, you've got to be rotating your profits out and you always got to be getting into cheap prices. But I mean, it's not so easy. There's no formula because what if you're on a unicorn? Everyone's scared of missing out that. But I'll tell you what, there's one in, one in 10,000 chance you're in a unicorn, friend. So 99.9% .9 chance you want. A lot of these are just going to be dead bodies, future dead bodies, XRP, Doge, Tantra, like anything down here, friends. We don't know, Chainlink, all these, friends, anything, anything. There's a long, long list here of just high market cap things. You just, you're not guaranteed that they're going to be the ones that eventually pump up to the moon, okay? So the overall theme of today and just this week so far, crypto altcoins are still renting sideways as we slow down in April. There's pretty much that's all we've been waiting to see. But underneath the surface, things have been moving, friends. Like, for example, Pulse Chain, Tangang Coins, PDI, they're starting to creep up. There's other stuff moving around here and there. We saw the recent, those crypto bands, there's Gummy Token and all these things moving around. They have these, like, bursts of final people coming out. And I'm going to quickly show you Gummy Token here as well, friends. So... This chart, okay, I don't know where value would be. I don't want to buy a $150 million market cap because I wasn't awake out there. But I mean, like, if I got in, I was like, what, three or four, it's like two to three X trading. It is what it is, okay? So, but I will be watching it. I will be watching it. So, where is the price too low, price too high? But you just got to remember, man, there is a narrative risk with many things, friend. There is a narrative, narrative risk, okay? You're buying after five months of your chain being popular, okay? It's pretty much the market said, hey, this is us pricing you in. We're all aware of you now. Okay, everybody's heard of you now. You have a million people on there now. You know what I mean? To basically 4X, you need to add another million people. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much the mindset you need if you want to conquer this type of like, you know, moving forward and buying low and trying to hunt cheap prices. So no one knows where the exact next narrative is, but it just helps you stay on track with that. Of course, I've got to remind you as well, friends. During that time, because I don't want to dance on anyone's grace, but during the time I'm warning them, like, man, everyone's feeling confident to make meme coins, start taking profit in your Soylana and racist coins, all this other stuff. But look, I, don't, I, just, I, can, I just feel in like 90 to 100 days, there might be a point where I'm just showing these charts to you. And I'm like, look, man, should have taken profit, should have taken profit, should have taken over and over and over again. But that's what the crowd is at the tops, isn't it? No one wants to get out. Also, very interesting, right? There's just been a video, friends, I've released it on my channel here. The new Death of Hex movie released like 60 minutes ago. So you've already seen, I've just uploaded before this, I've uploaded a video. These are the same guy 
This is the crazy part, friends. The same guy who made a video at the bottom of 2022 Hex, he's now made another video. Because, like, it's funny. He probably had the material for this back when the Corrupt SEC went after Richard Hart. And he probably started making the video, not knowing there's been a tremendous amount of progress in there. There's 11 lawyers. The Pulse and community is larger now. Do you see what I mean? So it's kind of crazy. And just to remind you, this is it. And also, he's even got me in here, friends. He's got me. Will Richard Hart pump Pulse Chain the same as Hexo? The narrator, he doesn't He doesn't get it. If you're watching out there, bro, like, he's just, <laughs> like you, you, your portfolio needs to be saved. You he probably doesn't even have a portfolio. He thinks I was sitting here with a perspective of, because he didn't watch the video, he doesn't understand it. He thinks we're like saying, please, sir, please pump it. Like he doesn't know that there's a blockchain technology, transparent addresses. You can see 170,000 ETH in there. You can see that there's a pattern of history of of moving up the prices and stuff. He doesn't see any of that. He's probably just, he's seeing like dead bodies and ghosts everywhere begging for it. But he doesn't know that I'm the one making fun of everyone else for asking that because that's why a lot of the Maxis friends, I know we love the Maxis, we need you there to defend the temple, but they don't actually really care about onboarding, do they? Because the whole EHEX stuff, I was like, okay, that's Captain's Call, I'm not going to criticize you, but bad for adoption, look what happens, there's an exit of the whole system and you made a new low against BTC, you know what I mean? So not looking good unless you're really, really sure you got infinite money to put some things in. So that's pretty much my, my attitude going on. And it doesn't even really matter, friends. We've got so much good potential when it comes to Tang Gang stuff, p Tropa, Teddy Bear Ecosystem, Nine Inch, got Hexy Bastard coming. You have BBC Coin starts flushing up. You got poor Pleb still there. Remember, this was his video from before. See the bottom, the green part, the cult of Hex. He made a video back then. It was at 2.5 cents. It drops. And then it rallies from that point. It rallies like a 10x from the bottom. But from his video point, it actually rallied up 5x from his video point. Oh, man, it'd be crazy if that happens all over again. Now, look at these amazing charts, friends, from Tangang all over. This is Dick with but okay? On Tangang charts, this is on Pulse Track. So D DWB moving up. Shitan moving up. Na na na, a banana gun starting to move up. Look at this. And moving up. HOA. Okay, look at this. These are crazy. These And these are USD prices, by the way, because if you want to see the true prices, you can have a look at the the um the pulse ratio. Yeah, pulse is really weak, friends, but this it look, it's sending you a signal, right? Pulse is moving down, and these things are still gaining. That's telling you something. That's telling you, whoa, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Now here's the thing. You might remember, you're like, wait a minute, your friend, your friend Sami here said that that might be a end of time signal. No, no, no. It depends on the context of the move. At the bottoms of bears. Okay, if the spear's lowering and you can get a coin that's actually going up, you are crushed. You're, you're going to do really, really, really well. Just look what happens with Soilana, right? As Bitcoin was moving down, Soilana starts accelerating a bit. Okay, but then ends up having it. Now, now it's five months later. Okay, it's five months after that that move, that acceleration. So that's why you're seeing these moves as well. PDI, another one, friends. Another another one. PDI, this is, look at this. This is huge. Okay, look at all these. It's flagging out. You can actually look at it on this pulse ratio just to get the... The true idea of what's going on, this is no accident, man. This is absolutely insane. So, yeah, th these are crazy. Oh, I can't wait for that to happen, man. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Just got to crack a penny. If we, friends, if we, if we crack, if Pete I can crack one penny, one cent, which is literally only like 50% away, 40% away, once it cracks that, now everyone's dreaming of a dollar, 100%. Even, imagine it gets to like five or 10 cents. Then everyone's like, oh, he can do that because it's just, it's pegged the pot. So it's, it's, it's crazy when you all think about how it all comes together, but... Yeah, um, at the end of moves, friends, when there's an explosion of the speed and the speed drops, then you have the final move of the altcoins. That's after an explosion. In a bear market, though, if you're finding stuff that is getting people when the speed is going down, that means there is a real network effect there. Because it basically means that your speed, which is meant to guide everything, it's bleeding. So pulse, pulse, X, and hex are bleeding. And people are like, what this is funny. The network effect is so strong. The product market fit of Dick with Bar and all these, they're so powerful. Okay, so this is Dick with Bar up to, it's, wow, it's up to 5.7 million market cap. Look at that. Crazy, friends. Okay, crazy, crazy. This is the pulse ratio. See, it's move, making new highs, making new highs. And I can show you here. And I don't know everyone wants to look at the pulse ratio, but that's just me just showing you. Okay, look, it's up to 5.7 million market cap. That's all here. I'm for everyone. Okay, you missed the first 50X. You're going to miss the next one as well. So come rocket flipping in. Very, very close. Teddy Bear is up here. I think Teddy Bear is now down to actually maybe 40 million. Yes, that's great. I think they're nice targets to have. So, and remember, we have Teddy Bear. We love Teddy Bear as well. But it's just showing you now, because I've used the ratios to show you this is an expansion rally of Dick with Butt. Isn't that funny? It's an it's literally, friends, an expansion rally. So Dick with Butt and the HOA and all these others, right? 
they're making, and Pete I, right? They're making highs against the SPI. That's not an accident. Super strong. Super strong. So just basically, friends, everyone in the ecosystem, they're bleeding. And everyone's like, man, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. So if you have something with such a powerful product market fit, which is a story that captures their hearts, if it's powerful enough, they can suspend belief from the SPI and they can go buy your thing. Okay, because it's that it's it's just ready for that. It, now sometimes it's random, but it just it is what it is. Okay, sometimes these are known as you know bear market narratives in crypto. For example, you know Bitcoin might have been going down in 2022, everything was just bleeding, but there are periods of Bitcoin slows down and things happen. It's very very hard though, very very hard, very rare, and they don't last long. But if you can find something like this, like you're just you're seeing it with your own eyes right now, continuing to gain. Something's going on. So if you start with a lower user base, it's easier to do this, right? Because a lot of people just say they're random. But cycle one narratives, cycle one coins, product market fit, you have all these and you can start to go up as everything goes down. That's the most powerful part about all of this. So it just makes you wonder, okay, if you can do this when you're going bad, what what are you going to do when Pulse Chain, Pulse X and X are going up? That's how you're trying to, you're trying to suss out, friends, okay, what's the big, big, big potential here? Because when these times things occur, when big dips happen, you keep them in the back of your mind. Because I know friends, for example, some people are underexposed to dick with butt right now. They're underexposed. They might only notice this if it goes to 30 million market cap and then it has a correction back down to like nine. Okay. So I've done this chart here. And if you do that percentage multiply, it's a drop of 67%. It might drop that much. You never know, right? It might drop 67, 70%. But because you're like watching this, you're like, man, it did an expansion rally against Pulse Chain. It's cute, it's lovable, it's fun, it's universal, it's fair launch. You know what I mean? There's strong holders. Part of Tangang Universe started really, really, really small. So it's growing organically, literally like a tree, right? <laughs> it's funny, no pun intended. Or is it growing organically? You get more conviction. So that's why I'm not telling you to add more lottery ticket bullets. But if that scenario happens, let's say, let's say Dick with but hits 30 million market cap and then comes back down to like 10 or 9 in that depth of that despair, people running away from it, you might be like, you know what? This thing has potential. I saw what it could do before. Now I want to add more bullets into it. That's what you can do. That's, what you, that's how you find a real home run. The real home runs, I know the ones you and I look at when we talk, when we see people, what we, what we the, the stories you, that me and you look at is... Okay, this guy puts in, for example, there was one guy who put in, uh, I think, 50 grand into Olympus Dow. Yes, I think it was 50. No, sorry. It was 50 or 500 grand into Olympus Dow in its first week. I forgot that guy's name, okay? Um, he's still on Twitter. He turned it into $96 million, but he didn't get out. I'm not joking, okay? He put like, yeah, was it 50 or 100 grand? It's crazy. So he, he did the ICO for like 500 bucks or two grand. And then in that week, he added like an extra 50K. Ridiculous, okay? And then Olympus Dow went huge. It's like buying the hex load pretty much with like 50 grand. He turned it into 96 million. He did not get out. It came back all the way down to 12 million. And then he hit out. And I think he smacked it down. Now it was only, he only got out like nine or 10 or 11 million ish, but only. But luckily he did that because it still hasn't gone anywhere. So crazy, right? He wouldn't get, oh, that, this is nuts. Such a story, okay? But you get to see, right? That's a story that you and I remember. Uh, I still I still remember that. Oh, he went all in and went at work. But the most the the most appropriate story should be looking at is you get in a bit, because you don't know, friends, it's like 30 coins, man. They all look good. You know what I mean? And something goes up strong and you have this regret. You're like, oh, I wish I got more. But then when it finally settles down, you're like, that's it. I'm not missing this one. I'm not missing this one. Screw everybody else. Okay. You know, I did that with HOA. I did that with literally Tangang. And by the way, I wasn't underexposed to Tangang, but I'm just, I knew some of you people were. I knew some of the baby dolls were underexposed because when we covered it here, okay, it ends up shooting up here. And we end up doing, look at this, from this point at the bottom, ends up doing an 11X. And then it drops back down here, 70%. It drops 70%, touches 73%. And that's why I knew down here, I go, I know a lot of you people wanted more. A lot of you people wanted more. Because it was such an 11x fast. I remember someone, some baby doll, he put in like 20 bucks. He wanted to put in 200. So he put in 20. It made an 11x real fast, pretty much 10x from what he got in. So his 20 bucks is 200. And all he's thinking about is like, man, it should be two grand. It should be two grand. That's what he's thinking about. And that's why I reminded everybody when I came back down, hey, here it is, here it is, friends. That's the difference. That's why I'm actually your friend. I'll play some pump music for me, you, and everybody in between. When things get to highs, okay, 
I love them and I appreciate them and I cover them. I told you about uh, things are expanding to new heights, but I won't say this is a buy of a lifetime. First, I'll never say that. If I, but I don't even think like that, okay? I will give attention when things come back down. I'm like, okay, do you want it? Here it is. Here's your chance. But most of the time, people don't take it. <laughs> most of the time. I know you guys take it. Guys and girls and pups and squirrels with your pointy elbows. Most people don't take it because the attention is on something else. Do you know what was happening during this time, by the way? During this time, what was happening? P I was going nuts. So P I was taking center stage. So people were selling a lot of coins to go buy P dies. It's just showing you that these things move, not in complete 100% tandem. That's why there could be a lot of opportunity friends. Even like Hex and Icosa, they might not top out the same way. You just never know how these things are going to play out. And last, I'll give a special mention to Landwolf, right? It's around 11 to 12 million market cap. It's still holding the line. It's been, remember, it's been vampire attacked four times. By the way, a new vampire launched recently, friends. I can't tell you, right? The amount of liquidity that these new vampires, you can tell. They're, so what happened is the the they're vampiring off this Landwolf and the rug ruggers, they don't want to give up. So what they're doing is they're taking all the money. And then once one of the scams dies and pretty much the buyers run out, they la they're launching another one and they're bootstrapping it with that money. They're basically trying to rehypothecate stuff. So let's say collectively they make like 500 grand grifting everybody. And what they do is they go, okay, that's 500 grand. Let's put a $100,000 on the side. Okay, we keep our 400. Let's leave $100,000. Let's bootstrap a new one and let's pump it up so, so people think this is the real land wolf. So that's what they're doing. They're trying to inject liquidity, do marketing and stuff to do that. They just keep trying and trying and trying. And it's unfortunate they're using basically the victims to do that money. But it doesn't matter because... We're not going anywhere. This Landwolf 615, the divine plan, not going anywhere. If Pepe's going to achieve the ribbiting, right, why can't we hit $1 billion Landwolf? That's a nice target, man. $1 billion, $1 billion is nothing, by the way. $1 billion is a joke. Many coins hit $1 billion. If Pepe or something's going to hit $100 billion this cycle, the sky is really the limit. <clears throat> okay, so when it comes to these, you still you need a lot of things to go your way. You just don't know when. I'm still holding. I like it as leverage on Pepe. I know what the thesis is, and it doesn't matter what happens from here. You know, friends, at the end of the day, you're still holding long and strong. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, or catch you soon.